What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends, the X-Men Love Triangle 3 pack with Wolverine, Jean Grey, and Cyclops. And so here we have the Love Triangle 3 pack posed and out of the packaging. Before we have a look at the figures, let's actually run through their accessories really fast. Starting with Wolverine because he does come with the most amount of accessories. Wolverine here does come with three alternate heads. He does come with a battle damaged cowl. He comes with a masked head. He comes with an unmasked head. We also do get a folded down cowl for his unmasked head. We have two pairs of hands. We have a pair of hands with the adamantium claws. And then we also do have a pair of hands with the bone claws. So Wolverine does come with quite a bit, which I do like that. Moving on to Jean Grey here, Jean Grey does come with two accessories, two different head sculpts. We do have the head that she has on her right now with the hair all the way flowing out. We also do get a head where she has her hair in a ponytail. Other than that, we don't get any effects for Jean Grey, which I feel they could have done something for her. Getting her standing, and let's move on to Cyclops here. Cyclops does come with three head sculpts as well. He comes with a head where he has his visor on. He comes with a sporty look. And then he also does come with a classic Cyclops unmasked head. So all of those look really good. And then he also does come with a left fist. As well as a left hand for shooting the visor. So all of these accessories do fit Cyclops really well. So with that out of the way guys. Let's actually take a closer look at each figure individually. Starting off, we do have a look here at Wolverine, and I really do like the way this Wolverine looks. Essentially, what we have here is the same Wolverine figure that we got with the Apocalypse Build-A-Figure Wave, but we do get more accessories now. Looking at the head, I do have him with a battle damaged cowl, and you can see it looks really, really awesome. You can see some battle damage right here, some nicks and dings in the cowl. It's all scratched up. We have his hair poking through, and he looks like he's just having an overall bad day. It looks like there's a bullet hole right there. He's missing a chunk right there. Possibly another bullet hole there. Some more scratches. So overall, this does look really nice. So the head sculpt is really amazing, and I am glad that they included it. Having a look at his costume, I really do love the yellow that they went with. Now, I do love the Apocalypse Wave Wolverine, but this yellow is fantastic. This is the yellow that they should have gone with instead of that orange yellow that they did. It just looks so much nicer, and I think this Wolverine is going to be in my display. You can see his shoulder pads are the exact same shoulder pads that we got before, although they are in a darker blue, honestly. We do have the tiger stripes, which are done really well. Here on his arm, you can see that they did shade a little bit of the hair. It's not the best, but you can see some difference here from the outside of his arm to the inside. So that looks really good. Same on this arm. And I do have them with the bone claws, and I think these look really nice. You can see exactly how cool those look. I'm really glad Hasbro gave us bone claws with Wolverine. And the good thing is these are not removable, so if you want to... Uh, alternate these you do have to mod the figure I'm gonna keep these the way they are because I love the way that accessory looks you can see he does have his red X-Men belt with the X right here it's a loose appliance just like all the other X-Men Wolverines that we've seen so it's nothing too new we do have his blue trunks and of course his yellow tights going all the way down to his iconic Wolverine-esque boots with the fins going off to the side. The black lines are done really well. I think the blue is a little bit too dark. If there was a way to have this the same shade of blue as the Hulk 2-pack Wolverine, I think this would be the perfect Wolverine. But overall, this is still a really gorgeous looking figure and I am glad to have him in my collection. So with Wolverine's details out of the way, let's actually move on to the next figure. So here we have a closer look at Jean Grey, and once again, I think Hasbro has done a really good job updating a figure that they released. When, when did it was the original Jean Grey release? I know it was before I started collecting Marvel Legends. It was some time ago, but I think this is a really nice welcome update to that figure. 
I do like some things about it. The head sculpt is a little bit to be desired. I kind of wish that they had used both face this head for both of them and just change the hair. But overall, I still think they did a really good job with the hair. It's a really nice, vibrant, uh, it's not really red. It's almost like a really dark red-orange. Like it's red-orange, but it's leaning more toward the red side. And they did a really good job with adding some little detailing right here. There is some shading in her hair, in her hair just to bring out some of that detail, which I think is really good. Again, the face, it's painted nice but i just don't like that expression i would have much preferred seeing this expression on both heads so there is that really do like her torso here they did add the shoulder pads and i want to say it's a retooling of an older figure uh these are not loose appliances they're actually sculpted onto the figure so these cannot be removed going all the way to the back you can see they are sculpted on, so you cannot remove those unless you cut them off. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is you can see a difference in color from the painted orange to the molded plastic. So there is that. Arm paint is done cleanly. That's a metallic blue that they went with right there. And it's pretty sharp on both sides, so it's not really a big issue. We do have her wrist guards, which I believe these came with Polaris first. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they do look nice, and they are cast in a metallic blue. Blue stripe going down her costume looks fine, even on the back. The X is a little bit sloppy. You can see there's some red bleeding through on this side, but overall it's acceptable. And going down to her legs, we do have these little gold bits right here. They're painted really clean. I'm surprised at how clean they're painted, honestly. There is a little bit of slop in between the lines, but that's to be expected because it's such a small area to work with. And then going down to her feet, uh, it's just a onesie. It looks a little strange. I always thought that she was half naked growing up, but turns out it was just a costume. It's just a costume, nothing to get over excited about. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually move on to the next figure. And so here we have a look at Cyclops, and this is a... Interesting figure to say the least. He is an amalgamation of Old Man Logan, the Punisher, and then the original Bucky Cap Cyclops body. The head is done really well. I had no issues with the original head, so I don't know why they would change it. If anything, I think he should just come with an extra head where we could attach a laser beam to his eyes. I think that would probably have been the best thing. Really loving how vibrant the, those yellows are and the contrast against the blue looks really good. Hair doesn't have as much detailing as the original figure, but that's perfectly okay. It's a completely different figure, so I can see why they made some differences in it. Besides the obvious difference, we do have a jacket. Now, this jacket was seen on the Old Man Logan and they repurposed it wonderfully for this Cyclops. You can see it has some nice wash effect in it the fur right here is painted so overall they did a good job just making this look like a worn jacket the red x-men logos right here it's a little sloppy you can see different layers of red on that side this side not so much that side it looks a little odd because we have more red paint in certain areas i don't know what's going on there we do have a very bright yellow for his costume. Now, that's the yellow that was seen in the original Jim Lee artwork. It does look really nice, but because the blues are different, you can't just part swap this Cyclops with the uh, Warlock Wave Cyclops. Really do love this belt. I might find a way to get this belt off and put it on the other Cyclops. But one thing I do notice is that all his loose appendages, like his belts and these straps and the boot straps they're all made of a rubbery material the original one had a more rigid plastic so i don't know why these are the way they are now that's not a bad thing it does make it a little bit easier to move them around and to put them in place but i don't think it's as secure of a hold as the other one they are done really nicely you can see the x right there and there Oh, the black is missing at the bottom there. I didn't even notice that. 
Uh, good thing it's going to be covered up by the jacket. The X on the belt is done really well. So overall, they did a really good job with this Cyclops. They repurposed all the original Cyclops parts and gave us this figure. And I'm not really complaining. I, Cyclops is my favorite X-Men, so having another Cyclops with a different costume is never a bad thing. So with that out of the way, guys, let's actually get them posed with other figures you may have in your collection. And so here we have Wolverine posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Wolverine posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. And finally here we have Wolverine posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And for a final comparison here we do have the 3 pack Wolverine posed next to the Apocalypse Wave Wolverine. Here we have Jean Grey posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Jean Grey posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Jean Grey posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And finally here we have Jean Grey posed next to the Toys R Us exclusive Dark Phoenix. Here we have Cyclops posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Cyclops posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. And finally, here we have Cyclops posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. And for our final comparison, here we do have Cyclops posed next to the Cyclops from the Warlock series. So with that out of the way, let's actually move on to their articulation. Starting with Wolverine, he does have a ball hinge in the head. He can look up. Uh, doesn't look too far up because that's as far as he goes. If you try going any further, you pop his head off the joint. He can look down. We don't have any head tilts, but we do have left and right movement. Arms on ball joints, they do go out only to there, which is a little bit unfortunate. Do a full 360. We do have really stiff butterfly joints in his arm, but they do work. They're just really stiff. Arm goes all the way around. We do have a bicep swivel, double hinge in the elbow, works no problem, swivel and hinge at the wrist. We do have an ab crunch which goes back and forward really well, waist swivel which is a little bit stiff on mine. Legs do kick forward, back and out, swivel at the thigh, double bend in the knee, that's a little stiff there, but double joint in the knee, swivel at the boot. Hinge in the ankle, which does go back and forward really well. And then we have forward-facing pin for rocker ankle. So, moving him off to the side. We'll move Cyclops off to the side as well. Jean Grey does have a ball joint in the head, and it's a really generous ball joint. You can see it does tilt, goes up and down. We do have a hinge in the neck, which she can bury her head into her chest. Doesn't go all the way back because of her hair, which is unfortunate does turn left and right and we do get enough clearance to move her head. Arms do go out to the side about that far. They do go all the way around but they will kick out to the side because of her shoulder pads. We have a single hinge in the elbow which does swivel, rotation and hinge at the wrist. No issue there. We have a ball joint in the torso which works really nicely. Does rotate as well. Legs do kick forward and back go out. Disappointing, but that's to be expected. Swivel at the thigh, double bend in the knee, goes up pretty far. She does have a hinge in the ankle, and that's really stiff. I'm really scared I'm going to break it, because that hinge is really tight. And then forward-facing pin for rocker ankle. Moving on to Cyclops, we do have a ball joint in the head, which he does look up the best out of the entire set. Does bury his head into his chin. Uh, no pivot, but we do have swivel at the neck. We do go all the way around on his arm. Goes out to about that far. Rotation at the bicep. Single hinge in the elbow. Swivel and hinge at the wrist. And before I forget, he does swivel at the elbow as well. We do have an ab crunch, which goes forward to about there. Goes back. Pretty hindered because of all the kibble on him. Swivel at the waist. Legs do kick forward and back. They go out to about that far. Swivel at the thigh. We have double bend in the knee. Swivel at the boot. 
hinge in the ankle goes back and forward and then forward facing pin for rocker ankle so overall really good articulation on these three and i'm really glad i have them so what we're going to do now is take a little break get them posed for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review and so here we have the marvel legends love triangle three pack posed for my final thoughts Overall, this is a really interesting set. I'm really surprised at how much each figure got, although I think out of the entire set, Jean Grey is probably the weakest one, and I'm not just saying that because, uh, I don't know, there's something about the figure that I think they could have done more with, either with accessories or the head sculpts could have been better. In my honest opinion, Jean Grey, even though I have been looking forward to her, I still think she is the weakest of the set. Not taking away from the figure, I just feel like out of this set, they could have added more to make Jean Grey more worth it. However, I still think this set is a really nice pickup, especially if you're an X-Men fan. And seeing as how this is the only way to get this Jean Grey at the moment, you're going to need to have this in your collection if you want to complete the Jim Lee team. Now, I was lucky enough to get my Love Triangle 3-pack from Big Bad Toy Store, so at the time I'm filming this, this set is available on Big Bad Toy Store, but also check your local GameStop and comic book stores because I do know they will be either getting these in now or soon, probably after the holidays, but this is still a really nice set to have if you're an X-Men fan like myself. So if you haven't already done so, track down a Love Triangle 3-pack and add it to your collection. With that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, Go check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other X-Men videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments. And if it's in my collection, I'll definitely have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.